Alright, much of brew about nothing. Playing some Tezzerator in modern. And we gotta turn through Tezzeret on the play. That's something. Um, let's Dark Slick Shores. Pass the turn. See if turn three Tezzeret is actually good enough. Probably depends on the matchup. Island and Serum Visions. Now we kinda gotta worry about counter spells. Opponent passes. More Tezzerets. Well, Polluted Delta, crack Polluted Delta. Get a Swamp and start our ramping. And pass the turn. Gitaxian Probe for our opponent. Well, they know Tezzeret's coming. Scalding Tarn cracks it. This could be the Thing in the Ice deck, would be my guess. There's Goblin Electromancer. Oh boy. Well, we're probably just going to die next turn. Vault Scourge doesn't help. Well, <laughs> let's run a Tezzeret out there. Take it up. Get a Sword of the Meek. Put the rest to the bottom. Pass the turn. See if we get to untap. Usually, if this deck untaps with the Goblin Electromancer, bad things are going to happen. All their rituals are plus two mana. Serum Visions. Eh, that's not the scariest thing they could have done. Electromancer doesn't even help there. Maybe we get another turn. Here comes Electromancer. Going at Tezzeret. We still don't really have anything we can do next turn, though. So even if we get another turn, probably still going to die. Ritual for our opponent. Alright, they're going for it. Ritual. Up to five mana. Thought Scour. Still five mana floating. Desperate Ritual. Four mana. Discards a land. Pass in Flames. Down to one mana. Ritual. Up to three mana. Our opponent is kind of pinched on blue mana. Desperate, ri uh, Desperate Ravings. Discards another land. Gitaxian Probe. Draws a card. Without any mana morphoses, it kind of seems like our opponent might fizzle here. I guess it depends on what's in their hand. Pyretic Ritual, Pyretic Ritual, back up to 6 mana. Pyromancer's Ascension. Desperate Ravings. This, oh man. Our opponent's been doing well with their discards. Gitaxian Probe triggers Ascension, so Pyromancer's Ascension is activated. If they don't win this turn, they might be in trouble. But they have a lot of card drawing left with Desperate... Well, Desperate Ravings. Oh, they can't Desperate Ravings. They might be fizzling here, actually. They really need a Manamorphose. Oh, all right. Never mind. So we're getting 15 by Grape Shot. So we're not technically dead yet. They killed Tezzeret. Is it possible we can still win from here, I guess, is the question. If they have another Grape Shot, then we're almost certainly dead. And opponent passes. Jeez, alright, well, <laughs> we survived. So we get to Thopter Foundry. We did draw into our combo, which is good. Sword of the Meek. Pass the turn. And see what our opponent can do. Plays a land. They do have an active Pyromancer's Ascension, so it's very possible that we just die here because of that. So Sanjin copy slate a hand. Double Serum Visions for our opponent. So odds are we're still just dead. They find a Grape Shot or something. They have used most of their rituals, but they have all their Manamorphoses. Once they find those, things get very good for them. Those work as rituals. And draw a bunch of cards. There's a Manamorphose. So opponent gains a bunch of mana. Draws some cards. Oh, they found a ritual. Yeah, all right, good enough. Uh, they can ca flash back their past in flames. Well, we know what our opponent's doing now. I guess that's good. I don't know how much sideboard stuff we have for it, but so Nile spell bombs come in. Duress comes in. Counter squall negate come in. Graph diggers cage comes in. Going down. Black sun zenith dismember. Go for the throat. I think explosives is okay. A ramp spell or a mana rock and I guess an executioner's capsule. And try it like that. Well, that was a pretty good hand for our opponent. Pretty much a turn three kill. We still don't have that much interaction really. So we get to play first. Well, we have the combo. 
is it fast enough? I guess is the big question. Um, let's just pollute a delta. Pass the turn. So engineered explosives gives us a bit of interaction. Opponent plays a tap land. We'll crack this, get a swamp, another land. Well, island and Thopter Foundry. Pass the turn. Serum Visions for our opponent. Plays an island and get Taxium Probe. Well, we'll see. If our opponent can't win next turn, we're not in the worst of shape. Opponent passes. Um, let's just Sunken Hollow, Sword of the Meek, and pass the turn. See what our opponent can do. Plays land, and passes. All right, well, sack the sword, get our first thopter. Would be nice to draw like a counter. Vault Scourge, eh? Well, Verdant Catacombs, let's get in with our thopter. And I think we just explosives on two to keep Pyromancer's Ascension from going nuts. Oh, is our opponent going to counter it? And we might as well crack this. Get a swamp and pass the turn. I guess they could bounce explosives? Well, let's see. Explosives on two hurts us, but it covers us from dying to Pyromancer's Ascension. And somewhat from dying to Goblin Electromancer. So let's sack the sword. Get a Thopter, gain a life. Sack the sword. Get another Thopter. Gain another life. Come on, Counterspell. Spell Skite. Well, let's attack with everything. Mm, well, I guess we just pass the turn. Chivalry for our opponent. Is this the turn that they're going off, or trying to? Pyretic Ritual. Pyretic Ritual. Manamorphos. Definitely harder for them to win without Pyromancer's Ascension. But not impossible. I guess it's possible we should have just thirst and hoped it like Graph Digger's Cage or Nile Spell Bomb or something. Very risky though. So there's the past in flames for our opponent. Gives their stuff flashback, so they got more rituals. Ritual up to three mana. Ritual to four mana. Manamorphose. Still at four mana. They could be setting up for Empty the Warrens, maybe? Seems unlikely they're going to be able to Grape Shot us to death here. Maybe with Double Grape Shot. Serum Visions. If they have Double Grape Shot, that would be unfortunate. Opponent has four mana at the moment, counting the untapped land. Exactly enough for Double Grape Shot or Empty the Warrens, so we'll see. There's the probe, down to 11. Our opponent's got to be planning on doing something big this turn, or else they're just dead. In two turns, I guess. So what do you got, opponent? Four mana. A Pyromancer Ascension. <clears throat> Did they just fizzle? Pyromancer's Ascension is not too scary here. Well, I think we're going to Thirst for Knowledge. Discard. Sword of the Meek. Sack our Sword of the Meek. Get back our Sword of the Meek. Actually, Swords of the Meek. And pass the turn. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Well, I guess we go for the win here. Oh, uh, it seems unlikely they can do anything about it. We're going to go for it. Tezzeret. Turn our Thopter Foundry into a 5-5. Swing with the crew. And I think we got there. Whew. All right. Well, first game, opponent did not fizzle. Second game, our opponent fizzled. So that was helpful. Um, I think we just got to run it back. We don't really have anything more than that. Uh, all right. This hand is not keepable. This end's not great, but we have a Duress and a Thopter Foundry. We might be able to take an extra turn eventually. See how good this Duress is. Polluted Delta for our opponent. 
Seam vents and serum visions. Bottoms both. Well, Dark Slick Shores and Duress hopefully get rid of Pyromancer's Ascension. Ooh. <laughs> How greedy are we? How greedy are we? Oh my god. Our opponent just put both to the bottom and they don't have a land. The greedy play would be to just take sleight of hand and hope our opponent bricks on a land for a turn or two. Oh, that's so greedy. Pyromancer's Ascension is so good. Our opponent's hand without Pyromancer's Ascension, uh, they have desperate ravings, I guess. And our hand doesn't have much. They just put two non-lands to the bottom, but the deck doesn't play that many lands, so they're... Oh. Uh, the other thing is they got Electromancer, so if they get to two mana, they're... I mean, Electromancer is not Pyromancer's Ascension, but still good. I'm taking Slate of Hand. Super risky. Our opponent's probably just going to draw the land. All right, no land yet. We faded the first land. Ooh, good. All right, well, now we get to leave up in the gate. So that kind of worked. If our opponent plays Pyromancer's Ascension here, we just get to counter it. Whoo! All right, feeling good, and we got the combo. So let's Ghost Quarter, Thopter Foundry, and Vault Scourge, paying life past the turn. We're not that far away from taking infinite turns. Opponent gets another land. Oh no! Our opponent just drew another Ascension. We get a Spell Skite. Well, let's get in with Vault Scourge. Go to 19. Play Sword of the Meek. Countering that would not do much for our opponent. Pass the turn. All right, opponent. What can you do? Oh, my. Oh, no. Oh, we are so wrecked. Oh, well, that is, <laughs> that is pretty unfortunate. Oh, sort of like our opponent just stacked their deck. Jeez, what are the chances? Opponent cracks. We don't have enough lands to go infinite with time sieve, but gets a mountain. And plays Electromancer. Passes the turn. Well, let's sack our sword. Get a 1-1, one, one, get back our sword, see what we draw. Well, let's attack with both. Play some ramp. Oh, we know our opponent has a counter. They have Desperate Ritual, Desperate Ravings, and a counter spell. That's our opponent's hand. So they're going to Desperate Ravings next turn and hope to draw into stuff to turn on Ascension and go off. I don't think there's any reason to play anything here. We just got to hope. Our opponent's not in a great position. I mean, Desperate Ravings right now. Discard their Ritual. Oh, they found another Desperate Ravings to turn on Pyromancer's Ascension. Discards a land, which I'm sure was what they wanted to discard. Well, our opponent could have it here now. That was... That was impressive running. I will I will give our opponent that. We played in a way to leave them with one land and zero Pyromancer Ascension. And they top deck Pyromancer Ascension and land, so... That's about as much resistance as our deck can put up. And I would say that in most games, that amount of resistance would be enough to win. It's just a little unfortunate that uh, with no cantrips or anything, those were just the top cards of our opponent's deck. So, yeah, that's uh, how it goes on occasion. 
I mean, I guess it's possible we're not dead, but it seems unlikely with an active ascension and a goblin or electromancer. The only good news is, if we get to untap, we win. And our opponent hasn't actually shown rituals, enough rituals, to actually win from here. So it's possible that they're setting up to win next turn. The only downside is they still have that counter, and I don't think we can get around that counter unless we can draw some sort of bait spell. But we need the time sieve to actually win the game. Oh, our opponent drew rituals, so... Well, our opponent is going for it. Are we dead, I guess, is the question. They have all the mana in the world. None of it blue at the moment. Another ritual. They probably found mana morphoses and past in flames. There's the mana morphos, so our opponent does have blue mana. All the blue mana they could want. I mean, and that's how the storm deck plays. Basically, you just hope for the best. And on occasion, the best happens. I don't even think this is that bad of a matchup. We have graveyard interaction and ways to deal with ascension, and it's very difficult for our opponent to win without ascension. But our opponent's just kind of drawn everything they could possibly want. All right. Well, we're going to scoop it up now. Unfortunate. Very unfortunate. Okay. Okay.